welcome to another episode of Unsolved Mysteries. Now, actually, you're watching my Boardwalk Hall channel. Um, you know, supposedly there was a booster blower, a 30 horsepower booster blower, an ancillary blower that's listed in the original documents, and we've never known if it actually existed or not. I'm not wired up for sound, so the sound on this may not be that great, but it's going to be a lot of climbing involved. I'm down here in the corridor where the great blowers are, are now spinning up, and directly above me are all the wind lines coming from the great solo blower rooms, great blower rooms, around and then up. We're going to go up there. Carl Hurson is up above me, and apparently there is some evidence of what they had planned as far as the wind lines for the uh, auxiliary blower, so we're going to investigate that. Okay, so there you can see the ladder down there. There's the corridor, and Carl and I are now on this this little platform with the all of the great and um, solo. Well, all, everything coming from the great blower. So you have remind me great, great low, low, great high, high great high, high, great low, and, and then hundred inch. Yep. So these are all the wind lines which currently go up to the grate and are coming from, if we pan down, these go down and then through the walls, etc., etc., to the blower room. But here's the interesting thing, is this. This has two fittings that are feeding into the grate high lines and it's capped off on this end, yep. right? Yes. There's nothing in there and it disappears into the wall knows where it goes. If there was an auxiliary blower, this is where it was coming from. And it, it does show that these lines were going to feed into the Great Hyde side. But as far as we know, we don't know what's on the other end of this. It's probably capped off somewhere. But we're going to try taking a look uh, in the offices and mechanical rooms on the other side of this wall to see if we can find anything, any clue to what this was. Mechanical room and our friends at the what union do you Carpenters Union. Our friends there were gracious enough to let us into this mechanical room. So the other side of that blower pipe that you saw that we climbed up to comes into this room and then is just capped off. So if there was an, another blower, it would have been in this room, but there's no way to tell now. So it's, it, it proves that they maybe intended to have one, but there's no proof that it was ever installed. So I'm up here in the solo great division, or great solo. Nick, is it solo great or great solo? Either, but solo okay. great. Solo great, fine. Nick's my go-to advisor on all this stuff. So anyway, in the solo great, and there are a couple of ranks that are swapped out in this division, which that's fairly common. I mean, taking one rank and transplanting it somewhere else because it works better for some reason, that's not that big a deal. But here we have a little more, I would say, extreme example of it. So in the solo great, great solo, you have a Gemshorn Tierce and a Gemshorn Septiem mutation set, which are their own ranks, you know, a complete dedicated rank for Tierce and one for Septiem. Now I'm on the upper level here, and the the uh, Septiem rank is up here with me. But the pipes themselves are marked like this one is C sharp, SP flute, voice number two eighteen. This was one of the Spitz flute Celeste pipes. There was a pair of them, Spitz flute and Spitz flute Celeste from the Echo Division, which for some reason, taken out of the Echo, moved down here, and reassigned to be the mutations. Now that's, even that's not that big a deal. It's kind of interesting, different, but what makes this more interesting is that when they swap the pipes, the new assignment is actually steel stamped into the pipe along with the original stamp, which is up here. In order to have done that, the pipe would have to be put back on a mandrel in order to put the stamp on the pipe without collapsing the pipe. Generally, when you move pipes around, if you're going to reassign something, you just take it from point A to point B and you engrave in, you scratch in the new name 
of the stop for where it's going and that's that. But here, it must have happened early enough or something that they did it with all of them. They have two sets of steel stamps on them. Kind of hard for me to see it in the camera like that, but there, there they are. Now higher up in the rank, when you get to the point where you have small pipes, they were not able to put it on the mandrel and it actually is scratched in, the, the new name like that. But taking it all into account, put that back in its hole, um, these are not Gemshorn pipes. On the stop list it says Gemshorn Tears, Gemshorn Septium. This, this is not a Gemshorn pipe. It just isn't, not even close, not remotely close. It's a spitz flute and it's not even much of a spitz flute because most spitz flutes are tapered and this is straight sided, looks to me straight sided. So why that was done, I don't know. It's not written anywhere as to why that swap took place, but that's kind of an extreme one going from in the echo division being one of the softer stops to going into the solo grate on higher pressure and being one of the not louder stops. It's a soft stop in the great solo, but still much more prominent in the organ than it would have been otherwise. Now this thing about the echo spitz flute celeste will factor in to my next segment. All right, trivia time. What is the single quietest stop in the entire organ? There is a definite answer. There is one rank that is the quietest. Is it in the echo? Or is it maybe in string three? Because remember that that was put in behind the fanfare. Way out there, it's the most remote division from the organ. Maybe one of those ranks is the quietest? Leave your guesses in the comments section before you watch the next little segment. And the winner is rank number, where is it? There it is, 218. See the 218 right there? Let me shine the light on it and get it. There you can read it. Voice number 218 wins the award for the quietest rank in the entire mid Merlage. Now to see why, let's take a look at the unique winding system. Let's see, uh, it's been a while since I've been up here. Okay, uh, all right, so the wind doesn't come in that end. And of course, it's not going to come in the front. Um, the wind, oh, no. The wind doesn't come in that end either. That's blocked off. Uh, maybe it comes in underneath. Uh, no, no. It, it doesn't, there's no wind under here. So of course I built this all up for the punchline, which is that the rank was never connected at all and has never sounded once in all the years that the organ has been here. And they removed a magnet board to duplicate it for something else somewhere. And this bundle of wires that's just hanging here, those weren't connected. Somebody started wiring, the chest got halfway through and stopped. So for people that want the organ restored exactly the way it was, you have to ask yourself, would you, do you want this left unconnected? It'll mean less work, but uh, I don't know how they managed to pull that one over on the Senator, but it has never played. And since it has made no sound whatsoever in all the time it's been here, it gets the award for the single quietest stop in the entire organ.